Welcome to another exciting edition of the vlog. I'm Alex Cousins. And I'm Jake Wilson. And today's exciting topic is Harold Clerman. Golly. Who is that? Harold Clerman, Jake O. Timothy Wilson, was known as one of the most influential directors in the United States. He directed more than 40 plays throughout his career, many of them through the group theater company, which he was one of the founders of. Whoa. Whoa. That was a lot. Let's go back to the beginning of the story, if you don't mind. Alright. <clears throat> so, on September 18th, 1901, in the Lower East Side of New York, Harold Clerman was born. He was the son of Jewish parents named Samuel and Bertha Clerman. His first experience in the theater was at the age of six, where his parents took him to see a Yiddish production of the plays Uriel Acosta and Nathan the Wise. Now, active Jacob Adler's performances in these productions really inspired Clerman, even at a young age, and even though he didn't know Yiddish. Well, wow. it's pretty fascinating. What else did he do? Well, he also attended Columbia University. Not when he was six, after that. And then at age 20, he moved to France and studied at the University of Paris. There he got inspired by the work of director Jacques Capot, and even was his translator and assistant for a production of the brothers Karamazov. He ended up writing his thesis on the history of French drama. I'll take it from here. Clerman started out his career after school as an actor. He was in Broadway productions of Caesar and Cleopatra, The Goat Song, The Chief Thing in Juarez, and Maximilian. However, he felt that the American theater wasn't giving him what he wanted. He wanted more out of his work. He said, I'm interested in what the theater was going to say. The theater must say something. It must relate to society. It must relate to the world we live in. Oh, uh, uh, he was tired of all the frivolous works being performed on the American stage and sought to make theater more current with societal, societal issues of the day. To accomplish this, he and his two like-minded colleagues, Lee Strasberg, often considered the father of method acting, and producer-director Cheryl Crawford, formed what would be known as the Group Theater. Indeed. The purpose of this group theater was to be a base for the type of theater they believed in. A forceful, naturalistic, and highly disciplined artistry. The idea of calling it a group came from the idea that everyone was involved. The three founders, the actors, directors, and producers. They were all in an ensemble united towards one specific goal. This was one thing that Clerman specifically aimed for in all his work. Clerman said, A real theater, in my view, is not simply a production unit. It is a group of individuals who work in common towards a goal which becomes more articulate and representative and characteristic of the community feeling as it develops. It isn't just an eclectic body of people <laughs> who shows any script they happen to fall upon at the time, but a group with a point of view that has social and aesthetic connotations a point of view that they share, and hope to make the audience share as well. Yeah. So, yeah, sheesh. <laughs> How about you put that in simpler terms for me? Um, I, I, I mean the audience, the viewers. Yeah. Basically, what Clerman is getting at is that theater is not just different groups of people who are reaching different goals. Everyone, despite their different roles in the production, need to work towards one common goal. For example, in a modern musical, you would have the actors, the orchestra, the lighting crew, sound crew, director, writer, lyricist, etc., mm -hmm. who all have different responsibilities, but they all work together to create, to create one piece of theater. Clerman is often thought of to be one of the first to introduce this idea of collaboration, total collaboration in theater. Yeah. So, one big happy family, huh? Sure. In a sense. Well, I found other stuff about Clerman. In this group, he taught lectures and had discussions with, with other members about creating a permanent theatrical company so that they could produce plays that dealt with more important modern issues. He did this with 28 other members, and some of these members actually included Stellar Adler, Lee Strasberg, and Sanford Meisner. His style of theater ended up heavily influencing American productions. 
and his shows included elements of realism that were based off of American stories, that he introduced political topics in his plays, and he also included Stan, can you say this for me, Stanislavski, is that how you pronounce it? Yes, Stanislavski. Okay. Thank you, Alex Cousins. <laughs> Train actors. <laughs> now, how about we hear from uh, Elia Cons- Elia. Uh, Elia Cousins. Hey there. Yeah. Uh, my name is Elia Cousins, and I was in the group theater. Here's what I got to say about my guy, Harold Clerman. I learned from Harold Clerman that a director's first task is to make his actors eager to play the part. Right. He had a unique way of talking to us actors. I didn't have it, and I've never seen another director who did. He turned them on with his intellect, his analysis, and his insights, but also by his high spirits. Harold's work was joyous. He didn't hector his actors from an authoritarian position. Mm -hmm. He was a partner, not an overlord, in the struggle of production. He'd reveal to each actor the onset, at the onset, a concept of his or her performance, one the actor could not have anticipated and could not have found on his own. Harold's visions were brilliant. Actors were eager to realize them. They were also full of compassion for the characters' dilemmas, their failings, and their aspirations. So, it seems like Clerman really cared about the enjoyment and passion of acting. Oh, absolutely. Approach to acting includes demanding the human being within the character, uh, according to Clerman. Yeah, even Uta Hagen, the famous actress, learned from Clerman. Uta, care to tell us? <clears throat> in 1947, I worked in a play under the direction of Harold Clerman. He opened a new world in the professional theater for me. He took away my tricks. He imposed no line readings, no gestures, no positions on the actors. And at first I floundered badly, because for my many years I have been accustomed to using specific outer directions. Uh, as the material from which to construct the mask for my character. But Mr. Clerman demanded I get rid of my mask. He demanded me in the role. My love of acting was slowly reawakened as I began to deal with a strange new technique of evolving a character. I was not allowed to begin with, or concern myself at any time with a preconceived form. I was assured that a form would result from the work we were doing. Basically, that reinforces what we were saying earlier. Uh, Clerman wasn't a fan of purely transforming into other characters. He wanted to see the actors themselves in the role, and according to Hagen and other famous actors, it reinforced their love of acting. He didn't want any actor to come in with a preconceived notion of what the character should be. He wanted to be a process of that for the person. Harold Clerman's first play was Awake and Sing, performed at the Clifford Odets. Uh, that was his first play that he directed with the New York City's group theater. It inspired Clerman to develop his own directing style. Clerman's directing style was made up of the elements, was believing that all the elements that made up a play, the script, the acting, the lighting, the scenery, and the direction needed to work together in order to convey a unified message to the audience. This is a collaboration we were talking about earlier. One of his methods included reading the script several times, and each time focusing on a different character or a different element of the performance. Yeah. He wanted to inspire, criticize, and guide his designers, rather than just simply directing them to create the show that he envisioned. He borrowed from Richard Balazinovsky's technique yes. of identifying the main action or super, super objective, objective of each character, and then using those to decide what is the main action or point of the play. He wanted his actors to find active or action verbs that describe what their characters were trying to accomplish in each scene. He also believed that the Stanislavski system, <laughs> system of acting, which his method is based on the concept of emotional memory, for which an actor focuses internally to portray the character's emotions on stage. He felt like this method, this acting technique, was worth knowing and studying but he deemed it too time-consuming to use it full-time. True. Clerman liked to refer to the director as the author of the stage. Yeah, that's, that's, that's great to know. That's fun. Thank you. Uh, Clerman has um, several famous students and associates through the group theater, including uh, Morris Karznowski, Clifford Odets, Sanford Meisner, Elia 
Han Sam? Yeah, that's her. Yeah, we just saw her in the studio. It's a him. Oh, oh him? Yeah, him. Yeah. Yeah, him. <laughs> Harry Morgan, uh, Robert Lewis, Canada Lee, <laughs> Francis Farmer, Howard De Silva. Did I get that right? Da Silva. Da, da Silva. Howard Da Silva. Silva. Da Silva. Sidney Lumet, John Randolph, and many other voice actors. And Uta Hagen! Oh, yeah! Ah! Uh, that, he really has had a great influence on the collaboration of theater and how to, uh, how to approach acting. Yeah. He, he then went on. on <laughs> yes, yeah, so he went on to get two Tony nominations. Two! Two of them, yeah. It's pretty great. Uh, and it was both in 1956 and 1957 for directing. He also married Stella Adler, the daughter of Jacob Adler, the man who inspired him when he was just six years old. He also was a drama critic throughout his career. He passed away on September 9th, 1980, at the age of 78. Hard. You know, um, uh, his techniques and ideas, specifically those about the idea of total collaboration in theater, and those about developing a character throughout the rehearsal or work process of a show are still practiced today. So, Jacob. Yes. Would yeah. you use these techniques in your future acting work? Oh, I, th I think so. Um, Clerman's ideas of bringing yourself into whatever part you play and not having a mask are ideas I'll definitely carry with me throughout my acting career, I know. Additionally, Harold Clerman's work on super objectives is something we both studied in Acting One with... Me. No. Oh, oh, oh no, Derek, Derek, Nish. Derek Nish. And I feel like we can both benefit from what Harold, Harold Clerman taught us about being passionate about acting. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think I can agree with that. I think we both can agree yeah. with that. And now for your pleasure and amusement. Actually, not amusement. But I feel like this video of Harold Clerman really demonstrates what he was all about and really shows what a good guy and great mentor he was. But the reason the theater is mediocre, and has been for a long time, is the state of our world, the state of our country. It's mediocre. It's afraid to move this way or that way. I know I'm right. I may not know the theater, but I know the country. <laughs> Uh, it is afraid to move, it is afraid to progress, it is afraid to be enthusiastic, it is afraid to be wrong, it's afraid to move on, it's afraid to have enthusiasm, it's afraid to take a chance, it's afraid to have, to have courage. This always makes me angry, because life is a losing game, and you might as well enjoy it. <laughs> After all, they say you're going to die. Once in a while, it occurs even to me. So it's a losing game, but what an adventure! What fun this flop is! <laughs> you say, this Clerman is a great idealist, which is another way for schmuck. <laughs> <laughs> but I tell you, I'm not an idealist. To me, all this thing is as real as bread and wine. So we're in a bad situation in the theater, we're in a bad situation socially, and that's why we're in a bad, and economically, and there's difficulty. What is the, what is, what is the, what is the answer to that? The answer is to go ahead and do your darndest to do the things that you think are proper to do any way you know how to do them. And to have ideas and ideals that are yours, not because they're cultural, but because they're necessary to you. They're necessary to you, to your friends, and to the world you bleed. And to fight for those things, and to argue those things, and to be yourselves with other people who think as you do, and to fight.